Roll. Welcome to the weekly in web browsers and IPFS GUI team sync call. As is customary, we shall do a round of what I did last week that I think is really fun and I want to tell you all about. Uh, and as is customary, Lidl is the most organized and has done his updates first. So let's get to it. Lidl, do you want to share a thing you did last week? I did my updates first, okay, but not sure about the organized part. Okay. You've got you've got pride of place. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, I don't have um, like a lot visually to show this week, but uh, I've been doing mostly uh, some low-level uh, PRs and uh, re like PR reviews uh, that are related to web browser stuff or JSIPFS things, uh, JSIPFS changes that I need for the brave integration. Uh, but while uh, like in between. I've added uh, tar x z package tar uh, target for IPFS desktop, and that's sort of uh, important uh, because we had Debian package, we had Snap, App Image, RPM. But a lot of people, like if someone just wanted to download IPFS uh, desktop and just un unpack it and run it locally without installing it uh, using uh, any package manager, they were not able to do that. They had to download all the sources and build it locally. So now we have this uh, generic uh, package format that can uh, be used by people to uh, install IPFS desktop without root access on their machine. So that enables use cases such as like in, the, in library when you don't have password for the root administrator account. You can just download IPFS desktop uh, and run it locally. Or if uh, some uh, package uh, maintainer for one of multiple uh, distribution, Linux distributions uh, or other operating systems uh, that we don't officially support wants to just repackage uh, pre-built binaries, uh, they can just use this uh, package uh, format uh, to do so. Uh, so I think that landed uh, and will probably uh, be attached to the next release. So that's sort of related to GUI apps. Um, I created uh, for uh, a dedicated and streamlined uh, issue, like meta issue for um, embedded JS IPFS in Brave. So what are goals and sections for user experience? We uh, need to address and low level stuff that is uh, lacking or is not fit or is uh, not feature uh, uh, paired with uh, go ipfs uh, so uh, if you are interested in brave integration it should paint a like a good picture where we are and where we head in and i try to when i discover something new i try to just add it like I've added a lot of stuff this week, so. Uh, yep, and I've nearly finished the range uh, request support, uh, like adding a range request support to JSAPFS. So range requests are used by browser vendors or download accelerators to request a specific chunk of a file over HTTP. And a lot, especially it's especially important for, for uh, video players. Uh, for example, like I think the video tag by default sends requests uh, sends a range request from the first uh, byte to the very end of the file just to see if a server is supporting range requests, and if it does, then uh, the embedded player let a user to seek to a specific uh, part of the video and then additional request is executed. Um, so uh, that work is uh, nearly done. I'm writing tests uh, just before uh, calls uh, today. I've been uh, finishing tests, but uh, I, would, uh, I also discovered a lot of uh, discrepancies between uh, JSAPFS and GoIPFS while re reading sources of GoIPFS. So I've been adding, uh, other stuff like uh, support for uh, not changed uh, response. So if uh, the web browser has a, has an immutable file already in its cache and the e-tag uh, header matches, 
then JSIPFS won't uh, send it again. Uh, it will just say, yeah, you had the latest version. And uh, that way we, we should save a lot of uh, bandwidth for our users. So that's like uh, an update from the GUI and uh, web browser side. I'm sort of blocked on some PRs that are open and I'll probably uh, add more. <laughs> so uh, I th think there will be a new beta release with about fi uh, fixes. I will probably uh, use a forked version of JSAPFS just to push uh, changes to beta channel and start testing them. And that's, uh, that's my update. I tried out the um, companion in Brave Beta, and it was very exciting because it totally works. Uh, and that was rare. Um, next up, uh, and any specific questions from Martin? Nah. Oh, yeah, Dietrich, click on the hands. Do feel free to interrupt uh, more. You mentioned some differences between JS IPFS, Go IPFS. Uh, is there a, a central place where those types of differences are noted. So from an interoperability standpoint, we can kind of foresee what, what kind of problems might be there or where we need to show it. Actually, maybe that's the wrong question. Is, is there a goal, that's a good, there that's a good goal question. around having those two implementations of the same uh, product project have... the architecture be interoperable? Yeah, so we, we are actually we have a set of interrupt tests that run against uh, Go IPFS and JS IPFS. Uh, it's just uh, we, it's just the matter that of the coverage, right? Uh, those small uh, cases around HTTP headers were either not uh, covered by tests, or we've just added uh, something to Go IPFS, but tests landed to go IPFS but were not added to interop. So we were not aware that JS IPFS was missing, stuff like that. So uh, basically when I add uh, support to JS IPFS, I will also like PR uh, our interop uh, repo, which will then uh, guard against any regressions. Cool. I love it. That is news to me. All I knew of was the JS uh, interface core repo but that now is only it was wanted to be this but became just interrupt between JS IPFS and JS IPFS HTTP client maybe Alan Shaw knows more but he's remaining mysterious yeah, the interrupt tests have been around for ever a long time uh, if there are if you notice interrupt um, problems, then absolutely it's appropriate to raise an issue there and um, or send a PR with a test that's failing and we can maybe try and sort it out. Um, or, or even better, send a PR of a test that's failing and a fix to go IPFS and or JS IPFS, uh, which would be like the most bestest thing you could do. Um, yeah. Of course, PRs Gratefully accepted. Um, uh, Enrique has got his update next. I will share for him. Desktop. So we've updated desktop for the latest Go release. Um, we've updated desktop to be able to add IPFS to the path on Snap packages. Uh, and there's been a new release of uh, JS Multicodec. I'm not sure what's in that. But let's have a quick look. Da -da -da -da. Ooh, support array buffer as an alternative to buffer input. If you're chatting at me, I can't see you. Oh, that's good to know. What's good to know, Martin? That there's been a release. Good. There's been a release. It's ready. You can have it. Uh, and next up, we're going to be adding IPFS to the user's path or at runtime. Uh, for, so this is the work has already been done to add IPFS to the path that it happens at its install time for Linux and at runtime for Mac and it basically there's three different code paths depending on your operating system and there's a pull request that Enrique's been working on to normalize that logic so that uh, it's always done at runtime and there's a if we need permissions we just ask the user and say we'd like to install IPFS on your uh, as, as a command line tool is that okay please give us permissions to do so um, 
which would reduce the amount of code we have, the number of conditions we have to check for and simplify. This is what is a relatively complex procedure. Um, and we're looking good for a release of O.8 o release of IPFS desktop, um, which will include all the good work that has gone on in JS IPFS to reduce the bundle size, plus some uh, fixes that I found for adding files, file drop in web UI. Uh, but most of it, like that release is mostly around install desktop and get desktop app, get daemon launched a startup and get the IPFS command line tools all done for you in one handy install so that we can then update the website with, hey, desktop user, here's how you get started with IPFS. Here's the, like, one, one trick to participate in. Um, that'll be rad. Next up, Diogo, wanna share a thing? Hello. Hello. So, uh, where am I? Here. Uh, last week, I had done a bunch of work on Protoscope, but the main things is that we ship the customer validation and the UI logging. So, everything's online. For those of you guys who are looking to create new tutorials, we've got a treat for you. And uh, the README is also updated with, that, with everything. So the um, Terry done uh, a nice work rewarding everything and making everything super explicit. So yeah, you can just browse the README while you're making a new tutorial. And I think you're good to go. But if you need anything, just open up an issue and we'll guide you through. Uh, and then a bunch of fixes while merging stuff. Our Travis config was breaking, so we fixed that. Uh, yeah, and now we have, we can cheat on Proscope. So if you, uh, yeah, I'm just going to show the, this is the hardest one. So if you're feeling. <laughs> the absolute <laughs> hardest thing that nobody can do by themselves. Yeah, it's not this one, but uh, yeah. The so, infamous blog lesson seven. Yeah, I can, I can show that to you. So if you guys are feeling stuck while trying to resolve this, you're like, oh no, I'm not sure why that can do. <laughs> it just can leak the new solution. Why is it working? <laughs> yeah, you can now view the solution and feel like you've done a good job when submitting because you'll always pass the lesson. So this was just uh, only the developers could see the solution, but now everybody can see. So if you guys don't want to, if you guys want to pass everything, you just can come to any lesson, view solution, submit, and you're good to go. That will make you feel intelligent. And I'm not sure <laughs> if you're going to learn anything. We might okay. need a, a new icon for passed by cheating. I'm not sure what that would look like. I'll have to have Eric, perhaps you can help us design that one. Well, I like having like maybe a slider or a t something that you have to like unlock first. You're like, are you sure you want to reveal the solution? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Really? I was thinking a line by line reveal where you could like, Did you oh, try yes. really hard? <laughs> but like just time it, like boop, boop, slow reveal. Yeah, one thing that, that I thought about was hiding this and this just just showing this when, for example, someone tried to submit like two or three times. But uh, I'm not sure if that's good UX or not. So for now, I just put it out there. So it's it's always available. But if you guys have any suggestions to change the UI of this, talk to me. Yeah, and then one of the things on our list is event. What's the nice word we're using when we want to say tracking? Which I not say tracking? Analytics. It, it, so there was another one we came up <laughs> that, with. Telemetry. It, yes. Yeah, if you want to be weird about it, you say telemetry. telemetry. Uh, I, I think I noticed Yoga dropped a note in, like, here's where we would add. <laughs> Telemetry for solution viewing. Yeah. So What's we have a couple notes of where we want to add that stuff, but we haven't added any of it yet. And that will help us figure out which of these things are too hard, which right now is very clear from the reports that come in on issues. Yeah. Are, are we also tracking how many times, like if they mess up, but then they eventually get it themselves, are we tracking how many times they click? You know, right right we're now not, we're not tracking anything. We're just 
I'm, it's, I'm it's sorry, something. do we have a little, it would be interesting if maybe there were levels, like uh, like you're saying, oh, I, I, I got it without help, or I, I required help, but it might be interesting also additionally if there was like levels, of, you know, first try, I get on first, first try each time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems, I don't know actually anything about telemetry, but it seems like something we'd be able to do based on the patterns of clipping within a lesson, probably. I think, I mean, I think Eric's talking about a feature, like a user facing feature. And I think oh. you're talking about, do we have data on how well people are doing? Are, are you talking different. about a user facing feature, Eric? I'm just talking about if we, like, if we gave them an, an icon that, that said, you know, you did it all on your own. Or, you know, you did it with a leg up. Maybe, maybe there's degrees of that, you know, like you did it all on your own, but it took you, you know, it, it, you know, you gotta. I feel like it'll just make you feel bad. This could be like I was mostly joking you know, about. But it's, it's mostly about, no, this is about like, you did it, you did it on the first try straight on through, you know, a, you know, a plus plus, you know, it wouldn't be about giving anyone a ding if they didn't get it on the first try. Or a creepy mascot. You got it on the hundredth try every time. Congrats. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The, the UX of that is something that we could spin on for a while, so it'd be good to have an issue, issue for that if anyone wants to raise on. Diego, Kerry, is that interesting for you? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, I think I, I saw, I'm not sure which side, I don't know if it's like Code Academy or Udemy or something like that, that has a, a bunch of badges that you earn when completing lessons. I want badges. Yeah, that's, but th that's a lot of work that I, I'm sure it's not a priority right now, but you can have like a profile where you have your badges and stuff like that. It may be cool, but not for now. We could do a health bar so that every time you get something wrong, you lose a little bit of your health. Uh, oh. and, and then we can measure at the end of success, how healthy people were at the end of the test. Like, I'll burn out, but I made it through. <laughs> yeah, but what if you lose like three hours trying, trying to, to figure something out, but only uh, submit once and it's okay? There's a lot of metrics, I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like we would need to work out what the goal would be for this. Not, <laughs> there's lots of solutions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it looks cool. Cool. Yeah, so I'm, I'm moving on. This was the main thing. And uh, yeah, we done a bunch of rewarding to some lessons. I'm working on the validation and the solution of the final lesson of the blogs. And I did a fix of the code highlighting that this, this stuff. <laughs> Now you guys can show uh, logs to the user without him having to open the console, the dev tools. But if this changed, this wasn't getting updated, but now it is. So yeah, that's cool. And that's about it for me. Yeah. So not, not very much this week then, just in all the things? Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I think it was a good day. Nice. Uh, next up is me. Okay, how do I share a screen? It's one of those. Uh, if you haven't seen it, DIY.org is rad for badges for classes. It's a good resource. I don't know if sure. no, I'll do it later. What did I do? I was away for Easter. I went on multiple Easter egg hunts. It was fun. It's really easy to beat people with tiny legs like children to get Easter eggs. Um, but what did I really do? I proposed an IPFS office hours. Um, this was kicked around with the project working group. Um, the suggestion is that we get the feedback that like there's a bewildering array of repos and it's hard even for folks who are full-time focused on this to know where to start as a contributor. So an office hour where you can just be available on a call, announce it on the IPFS weekly, and uh, have an hour a week where there's no agenda, it's just a couple of core members of IPFS will be available to answer your questions like, I really want to get started as a contributor, or 
I've, st I've got this issue and I've started trying to hack around on it, but I don't know where to go next or I'm stuck on this bug. Or I'm something to give a leg up to people who want to contribute but don't know where to start. Um, if you are interested in commenting on that or have ideas, please go to IPFS community issue 407. Um, what else? Uh, there was a cool bug with uh, one of our main features, which was uploading files to IPFS. Uh, this hit us in the web UIs. Um, and just move that away. The, this was kind of interesting. It was it took a while for me to trace it down, partly because my head hasn't been in that part of the code base for a while, and also because there was another bug with uh, uploading directories of files in web UI uh, from IPFS desktop that I hadn't, that was occluding this bug. So you, the two bugs were kind of totally separate, but in the same part of the functionality. So that was fun. Um, this bug was basically, you couldn't upload a file more than one meg, but it, it really wasn't. It was a bug between the interface between pull streams and node streams. Um, and there's this interesting, so Hugo did a lot of great work to reduce the bundle size, um, but there was, the, we had a similar module dependency that was called pull stream to stream that is, was doing the work of taking a pull stream, wrapping it up and presenting it as a uh, regular node stream. And the replacement module that Hugo wrote was great, but it missed one key fix, which was that node streams might call read a bunch of times without waiting patiently. And pull streams don't like it if you do that. Pull streams have a contract whereby the sync must uh, must request the next chunk with a callback and then wait. And then when that callback's called, then it can ask for the next chunk. Uh, and if you do things out of order in a full stream, things break pretty quickly. So what we were seeing was you'd upload, uh, we had uh, web UI has a, uh, a module that basically takes, a, whatever, however big the file it is, it'll just feed it to the next stream along in chunks of one meg. Uh, so we were seeing like a few chunks of one meg get, make it and then the stream would end and then a few more chunks of one meg would turn up after the stream end event. And of course, yeah, in the stream world, it's pretty bad to send an end event before you've actually finished. Someone in the chat, if, if you've got, if you want to interrupt, please just jump in because trying to like see the chat while you're talking is quite hard work. I'd like to see a CSS page turn for when I want to pick a solution. Uh, I have to go to another meeting. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> no worries. Um, Anyway, so that's where the majority of my week went. Um, the good news is it's fixed. And then Hugo proposed, he dug into the, my proposed solution and was like, I think we can do better. So he's got a tidier solution to that. But the good news is it's fixed. And so is the um, dropping directories in desktop. So you could drop directories in Chrome and Firefox, no problem. But dropping directories in desktop had a bug in it. So both of those are fixed, which means that we are all clear of major blockers for releasing the next uh, the next releases of web UI and desktop, which is great. Um, there was also a tiny UX issue. I say tiny. There was a super annoying UX issue on uh, dropping dropping files in an empty directory or any directory that didn't have many things in it. So we've got a drop handler that's part of the file list that detects, oh, you dropped a thing in a folder. But and then if you tell from the gifts, but they, the file list doesn't extend to the full height of the screen. So if you dropped a thing below the file list, it was being handled by the app level drop, drop target. And the app level drop target was like, oh, you've just dropped it anywhere on the app. So I'm going to upload it to the root of your MFS. So you thought you were uploading something to like root slash Michael directory, drop things in there, but actually you were always uploading things to the root. That was surprising. Uh, I got a quick fix in for that. It's better now. Um, Eric did a good design review of Web UI, and I've been slowly giving feedback and uh, occasionally, as at the time, dropping in uh, his changes. So he noticed that the contrast on the text on our main action buttons, uh, add connection and add file, was not high enough to meet accessibility guidelines. So uh, he made a proposal to make them better. So I've done that. 
Uh, so we'll be slowly grooming the web UI for any accessibility uh, transgressions. Uh, that's an ongoing process. So what else then? A bunch of stuff to fix. Docs, site, and nothing else too exciting. What am I doing next? I will be uh, adding some end-to-end -end test file upload to web UI and desktop because we can't find out about that in production. It's terrible. Uh, also, now that we have solutions to uh, questions in proto school, uh, in spare moments, I am adding tests to just just integration tests that basically run through all the classes and make sure that the solutions work and make sure that proto school is still functional. This is also helpful because I've got an open PR to update KSRPFS to the latest release for proto school, but the only way to know whether we've broken anything right now is to manually go through and try and complete all of the all of the proto school classes. So I think that is a good job for a robot, uh, and I, I'm working on that. Uh, otherwise, I'll be working on content for D Web Camp and cutting releases of desktop and mobile. <gasps> That's me. Any questions? Don't put them in the chat. No, good. Great. Yeah, Someone has a question. Shout, shout, shout it out. So polite. Click, please ask me a question. Eric? I thought you had your hand raised for a oh, question. You. Okay. Oh, you guys. Okay. <laughs> so polite. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> So uh, my question was very, very, very short. Uh, do, when can we expect a new release of Web UI this week? Uh, well, Web UI will be uh, this week, and hopefully desktop will be this week. Um, it just we have to review some uh, outstanding PRs and get them in. Uh, worst case scenario, before this meeting next week. Next up, I think it's Eric. Yes, I had no question. I was merely calling attention to the polite individual who did. Feel free to unmute and shout in these cases. Yes, I, let's see, desktop one. <laughs> um, yep, further as Ali mentioned, fleshed out some desktop UI uh, suggestions, both from a accessibility standpoint and some interaction design ideas, which uh, may or may not work. Food for thought at any rate, for example. Um, perhaps simplifying the hash explore box by removing the explore button in sort of a googly way. Um, again, a lot of this is, is really food for thought and, and one big outcome is that I end up knowing, understand, better understanding how these things work um, at the tail end of it. But uh, perhaps we get a, a toggle for the de for the desktop uh, UI, which uh, allows you to turn the to, to turn your uh, daemon back on, which is, cannot be done, I guess, on the on the on the web UI. So those that would. Uh, that would mean that those two start to diverge again. Uh, but at any rate, something to discuss. And uh, some thoughts about modifying the, the, uh, the graph to make it uh, a little bit, maybe a little bit more uh, useful and informative. Because if, if one of the, uh, you know, if your output is lower than your, uh, than your upload, then, or then, then you uh, you lose that tracking visually. So perhaps we we put a line chart on top of everything, and maybe make right now you have to hover over it like this, the the dot at the top of of each um, you know each data point. So that that's that's kind of fudgy, Ali. It it might not be super intuitive, but right now the uh, graph is deliberately stacked so that the output and input like it's not corresponding to the height it's corresponding to the distance on top of the blue line so the orange will always be 
equal to or above, thus your like total in and out bandwidth is the sum total of the two. Cool. Okay. See, learning. Uh, yeah, but regardless, you know, putting the uh, putting a line on top, I think, well, uh, it it doesn't need to be an accessible color. So, but making it a higher contrast, you know, darker color, I think, adds visual punch to the whole thing and makes it easier to track. And also, uh, the the bigger change here is is making the entire the entire chart is essentially hoverable, kind of like actually kind of like Google Analytics, where you just can hover anywhere up here, and there's a little vertical uh, vertical rule that lets you know a line, lets you know exactly what time you're looking at. Might be a pain in the neck to implement, but. Yeah, well, I think that's cool instead. Right now, you have to hover directly on the point, and it's tricky getting there. So that's really cool. Yeah, and then in progress, I'm doing some uh, brainstorming with a couple of the cluster people about uh, Raspberry Pi enhancement, uh, like LED readouts for their photo school. Um, like whenever you pin something, it, it would light up, uh, and doing just just, just little, uh, little fun, uh, just fun interaction for to to add some life to their uh, to their presentation. And if anyone has, you know, wants to make their content a little bit um, more fun, let's talk. Uh, uh, and additionally, I'm I'm in the middle, almost done with uh, taking my first proto school class, and and while I was doing that, I thought, oh, why don't I just go ahead and, you know, make a branch and, and, and do some uh, editorial uh, updates that, uh, that strike me, which might be completely off base. But at any rate, it, it helps me understand it better as I, you know, if I'm kind of writing as I go. So, uh, Terry, sure. looks Sounds good. awesome. And uh, I'm just in a general sense general PL sense at trying to add more process surrounding how design gets done. And, uh, you know, part of that is setting up this design shop, which was, I think, the design lab. Um, and, and then additionally trying, I mean, kind of blocked right now on setting up a global design issue, sort of a GitHub project board for the, to, to check the pulse you just like you go to this board and you can see what our designers are doing period, you know, and you can see the priority and whatnot. So um, hopefully that that'll get us toward a little bit more, uh, you know, sanity for people like Agata. Uh, yeah. Next doing, uh, hoping to design that component library ASAP, just get that banged out uh, and et cetera. Noise. Any questions for Eric? Uh, did you get many useful responses to your IPFS questionnaire? And so I'm going to be. I'll distill that into a little, a little readout, and there might be a couple of, uh, you know, meaty, more meaty outcomes from that. Hopefully, again, that that's that's very much about me understanding the the user, so that I can internalize. Moving forward, Dietrich. Yeah, you, you mentioned a, a service you were offering, adding fun to things. What what types of fun are you offering? Well, in terms of presentations, if you have uh, if you have one for is that is that a laugh you're hiding there? <laughs> it's a laugh cough. Those are the worst. It's a, it's a laugh cough. Yes. Or sometimes consolation prize for coughing. Thanks, Dietrich. <laughs> If you are doing, uh, if you have a presentation for for IPFS camp, and you know, just in terms, uh, not only of like, if you have visuals for that, I would love to see them. But additionally, um, experiential enhancements you know, are always are always fun. Digital uh, projection stuff, visuals. You know, just uh, 
just be thinking, you know, it, is there any way to make, uh, make things just add, um, add drama and flash, which would not supplant the, you know, or, or diminish the gravitas and, you know, and reality of what you're really learning, but, you know, a spoonful of sugar. Hit me up. Right on. Uh, next up, it's Terry. Hello. Sure. Okay. So, I will not bother showing you this because you've seen it before, but the ability to build a proto school lesson that requires a file upload has actually been merged into the code base now. It has just been sitting in this PR for some time because we had too many things mixed together and the lovely Diego said, Terry, just merge the thing. So uh, that means that the work on the MFS tutorial is in its own PR. Um, as Diego mentioned, we've been improving the instructions as we go along and add new features so that the instructions for building tutorials are getting better, but I don't consider them done by any means. My latest excitement today is Offline Camp actually happening again. It's been, it will have been like a year and a half. Uh, so really excited about this. We are at the stage of having this uh, live. Our application is live. There's a $150 discount right now for people who apply super early. Um, and we'll be doing more heavy promotions starting this afternoon. But our top secret emails to like, ooh, we love you the best. No, we love you the best. No, we love you the best. Did you get three emails? That's because we love you the best. Uh, those have gone out. So we're excited about this. There's also a blog post, which in traditional offline camp fashion makes you review many photos of like triplets and llamas and Oregon Trail gifts before it reveals anything to you. So we got all that awaiting. Um, and then what else have we been doing? We have a new Pro School chapter in Nairobi. We have oh a new call. So um, Ollie, you mentioned that this idea of doing um, like office hours when we were in Lisbon. I said, oh, but Michael and Portia are doing that on the IPFS community working group call. That call doesn't exist anymore, and I recycled the time slot into a proto school weekly call. Um, so it will be people who are building tutorials, people who are organizing chapters, etc. So both like, what are the updates? What have we done to change the UI? And what's going on in your chapters? Are you succeeding at building your community, etc.? So everybody's welcome to join for that. You can click the link to this GitHub issue to learn more about that. Um, it occurred to me that we should actually use our Twitter account to tell people when we add UI improvements. So I've done a little bit of that so far, advertising our cheating scheme. Um, and then the MFS tutorial I am plugging away on and it's much improved by a lot of the features that we have now. So in particular, as we're like moving files around, the ability to just show people what's under the hood instead of making them run another LS command in their code is lovely. Um, so still plugging away at that one. The My headphones are about to run out. Um, so more of that coming, offline camp promotion, I also am, I have to not type for 15 minutes out of every hour. So if people have suggestions for what I should do with my time, I'm positive one can't dictate code. So, you know, that's it for me. Any suggestions? Eric. Who is make and model? Um, my buddy, Steve, whose idea offline camp was, it's his design company. They're like, uh, web, more like product slash web design, I guess. So he's the, the main builder of the site originally. And now I can actually update it without breaking it. It's very exciting. Awesome. Looks yes, cool. I forgot to show. I forgot to scroll and show people that PL is our first listed sponsor of Offline Camp. If you um, know other companies I can get money from, please let me know. 
uh, and you know, these these people might be good uh, to put on our list of potential um, you know, outside helpers to you know, to help us crank through. And if, frankly, if if anyone has any, uh, you know, has connections with um, designers, photographers, et cetera, et cetera, you know, creatives who who do uh, contract work or you know freelance and uh, agencies whatnot who do great work, um, feel free to send them my way or send me links uh, because uh, there's a big backlog you know, of design stuff to do. For next up, we have Dietrich. Also of note, we have three more people listed in the thing and 15 minutes. So go, go nuts. Noted. That's going to take me 15 minutes to share my screen though. So sing a song where's your holding music uh so i i'm, I'm gonna be honest I, I really should have not gone to any other meetings besides this one because it really just resulted in lots of other things to do so i don't have a lot of gui and web browser work to share uh but a, a couple of fun things maybe um this is a a slide I put together for somebody was going to do a presentation at a large media network company. They're like, we just need one slide to be able to kind of show everything that our whole stack could offer them from a, from a business standpoint or different opportunities they can have. So fun, fun exercises and how do we communicate a really complex, incredible stack, including a full paradigm shift uh, to an entirely different network architecture. <laughs> Um, if you have uh, uh, comments or improvements or if you ever need stuff like this, uh, feel free to reach out and I can maybe help put it together. Hopefully, in, uh, through the collaborations work, we'll have a set of resources like this. So when people like you go out and talk to potential collaborators or uh, uh, users or customers, as you were, um, you can share this information in a way that will make sense and be in their language, if not yours. Um, what else did I do? I had a little side project helping wrangle some uh, exploration into what parts of 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 IPFS were used by Filecoin. So I put together a kind of a visualization of the dependency graph in in Go IPFS. It didn't work out. So Eric, I, I might need your help here adding some fun to this dependency graph. But the, the most interesting part is the one is is that bottom bottom right corner where I see the gopher js library included in go IPFS, which I really want to track down what that's being used for or, or maybe I don't want to know I'm not sure uh, but most of the, most of what I did for the rest of the week was related to other working groups and other projects. Um, the, well, hopefully be some fun stuff coming out of the collaborations working group that will help us uh, in our browser integrations work. So that's me. Noise. Um, who is next? I am looking at the wrong document. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, of note, Dietrich, your business slide looks business. I'm not sure. Go for it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Found the unmute button. Uh, I'm not normally here anymore because the time zone changed and now I can't make it. So I apologize. I tried to put some notes in sometimes. Um, what have I been working on? So interesting stuff for you guys. Uh, the async await changes in JS IPFS. We've been working on basically rewriting the whole of uh, JS IPFS, libp2p, and IPLD to use like async iterators and async await. And we're almost at about 50% of the modules uh, that we want to change uh, with a pull request or a proposal in progress. 
Um, so that means we're making we're making progress. It's taken ages, but we're basically rewriting a whole load of code from the ground up. Um, and there's a lot of decisions to be made and a lot of bike shedding to do. So it's just taken a while. Uh, what else? I've been uh, so Go, Go IPFS zero four twenty was released. So I went ahead and uh, oh wait, hang on. I've uh, I've prepared uh, a. Uh, I have prepared tabs for these. Anyway, this is the uh, this is the issue for uh, the async iterators and stuff. Like we can see uh, we use emojis to signify what has what has been done or not, and we're basically oranges. We've got some nice green apples, but if you look, we're on like forty nine percent, which is kind of cool. Um, and most stuff is being worked on or or whatever. So. There we go, that's that. Uh, so, go IPFS dev. This is the NPM module that uh, that you can install, which will install Go IPFS into your node modules folder for you. Uh, uh, go IPFS 0420 was released, and every time that ha every time Go IPFS gets released, we need to release a Go IPFS dev version, uh, just so you get the latest version as well. Um, so I did that, that was a week or two ago, I think. That's kind of interesting for you. Um, uh, flip back to where was I? Here we go. Here we go. Uh, oh yeah. So I did this a while ago, but I because I haven't been here for um, for a little while. I thought I'd just let you know that I'd sent in a pull request to JS LibPTP MDNS, which um, gives uh, it the ability to discover uh, Go IPFS nodes on the local network using MDNS. Uh, as well as uh, discovering like existing JS IPFS nodes, so we'll discover both, which is good. So we're we're compatible, but also incompatible at the same time. So fun times. Uh, but that's sort of it's sort of like a stopgap until there is a proposal for like the next version of MDNS, which is going to use use it a bit better than we do at the moment. Because uh, the Go MDNS implementer, I thought this was going to take literally five, 10 minutes to look and see what was different and then fix it up and, and send the PR. But it took me ages because the implementation of, of how this is done in Go is really funky. Uh, and I couldn't figure out, like, you, it, it, it starts listening on a port for five seconds and it sends out an MDNS request to everyone, but it asks for the response to be sent back unicast. So I was looking at the network and going like, why can't I see any, resp any responses? And because, like, obviously, I weren't wasn't being sent it. Um, like, yeah. Anyway, so it, it listens on a random port, waits for five seconds, gets some responses. Listens on a different random port. This is like following MDNS, which you're not meant to do. So it's it's kind of all fun. Um, but so this basically brings JS LibPTP MDNS in uh, in compatibility with that implementation. Uh, and so this pull request is ready to go. It just needs a final review and merge. Um, the last thing I have been working on is um, you might be interested in the JS IPFS OKRs. They are, it's taken me ages. I've been really ill the last few weeks, so I've been at less than half capacity, but um, we've kind of got a bunch of OKRs ready and people have agreed to own them. Uh, so I think I will shortly be uh, transferring them into the spreadsheet. And I'm not going to talk about them now because I'm going to record a video uh, with all of the reasoning and stuff on it, and that will be way more interesting to listen to. So that's uh, that's me. Oh, wait, so this like, uh, next. Yeah, so I'm currently deep in um, uh, trying to change Lippy to be Mplex to be async await. Uh, it is, Mplex is this, uh, well, multiplexing is this way of using one particular stream or connection uh, to service multiple um, multiple clients, I guess. Uh, so you can, w without them getting all confused in between, so it, it, it kind of papers over the the, uh, the the roughness of having to like pick out a packet. Is it mine? No. Or, but it basically does that for you and gives it to the right person. So. Um, it, that, that's nice, and uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm deep in the in the bowels of that, looking at the existing JS implementation. The new there's a new pull um, pull streams version of it. That uh, well, it, it's not really new, but it has it, it was written and uh, never got included into the P2P. Um, and also looking at the Go IPFS implementation of it as well, just to check that we're doing the right thing. But at the moment, um, I I am. I understand how it works, and I have something that's way shorter and less complicated than what's already there. So I'm, I'm 
getting happier with it. So that's it. That's it for me. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Any questions for Alan? Hugo, Mr. Diaz, go for it. Alan, uh, so the pull request uh, from Jacob to add pull and plex, uh, should we go like forget about that pull request and wait for um, the stuff you're doing or what do you think we should do? Uh, if it is, it is actually, it has been proven to be better. I've already looking at it today, found that there's a problem in that uh, it doesn't clean up uh, the, so when you're using Mplex, you ask for new streams each time, every time you want to talk to uh, like a different protocol to someone. Um, and it doesn't clean up those, those uh, like it, they, they can be closed properly and that's fine, but those references will still hang around and ne they never get deleted, so they won't be garbage collected. So that's something we probably need to fix up. Um, and also there's like a hard limit of how many streams that can be, uh, that can be opened, uh, which isn't in the existing implementation. And, uh, because these streams aren't being cleaned up, we'll, sorry, um, sorry. I'm talking about the pool and plex. Yeah, no, me too. Uh, this, so there's those, there's these two problems that I found. Um, and so. I'm, I'm going to have to pause you there, gentlemen. I think this is a conversation that could be taken offline. And we have three minutes left on the clock for Hugo to deliver whatever he would like to share with us. Okay. So um, let me share the screen. You guys can see my screen. You see the, the doc? I'm not really sure I'm yes. sharing the right thing. Okay. Uh, so basically, we're working on the IPNS over DNS stuff, starting with uh, adding support for resolving IPNS paths with uh, uh, domains. Uh, we had a meeting with um, the IPNS Tiger team. Um, I opened an issue about making IPFS name resolve recursive and also IPFS resolve without the name part. So the single resolve and the IPNS resolve. Uh, but that uh, basically breaks the IPNS over PubSub. So I opened an issue about it. Uh, and I'm trying to finish the, um, the resolve first and then figure out what's going on with that. Um, yeah, I added uh, tests to the HTTP client related to, related to the IPNS stuff because they weren't there. The, uh, the, interface, the interface tests. Um, and then I will look into the stuff that Ali already talked uh, about uh, the pull streams not being uh, correctly transformed into streams. Uh, yeah, that's fixed now. And uh, I'm finishing adding support for the file on API to the HTTP client. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's it. I'm blocked with uh, the recursive thing I just talked and uh, yeah I'm finishing the tests for the file um, DOM API uh, and I will also add support for it on the JS FS uh, and I'll continue my work on the IPNS over DNS that's it uh, so that that means that we would be able to pass a DOM file object straight to IPFS add Okay. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, you, uh, this example was using the uh, package call pull either stream something, uh, and now you can just pass directly the files list. Not the files list, but uh, an array. So uh, you need to do something like this, 
can pass the array direct. You can pass the array directly. Uh, you don't need to use uh, any any other stuff. You just pass it directly, and the stream is created inside automatically. Great. That will save us some lines of code. Yes. Um, any questions for Hugo? Then, at one minute past six, we have completed a round of updates. Uh, is there anything that anyone desperately wants to speak about? And then, if it's not burning inside you to say it so quickly, then it's can't wait till next week when we will meet again for another edition of IPFS GUI and in web browsers weekly sync. This has been lovely. See you soon. Bye. Bye, everyone. Yeah.